Can you see the screen? Yeah. Very good. Okay, let me just fix the laser. Okay, I'll give you a signal after 25 minutes and there will be five minutes to, to the end of the talk, right? To the end of sure, the sure. Okay, so I yeah. cannot find the laser, I'll just go on with the mouse. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, hi everybody. Uh, it's really a gr great pleasure to, to attend, although remotely, and I really uh, sorry that I couldn't attend. Uh, that was actually the plan. And uh, of course, thank to the organizer for the, the invitation and the opportunity to present our work. So I'm Elad Kore, and I'm coming from the Technion, the Faculty of Material Science and Engineering. And I'll talk about interlayer electronic transport in shield bilayer graphic uh, systems. All right, so first I would like to thank the people who are taking part, uh, my group at the Technion and all the collaborators from IBM Zurich and uh, Tel Aviv University, and of course for the funding agencies. So I think electronically speaking, uh, uh, one of the two in most intriguing examples of how the angular mismatch, if you basically consider two layers of graphene uh, or two mesostructures that are stacked one on top of the other, I think uh, the two most uh, intriguing examples of how the physics, the underlying physics can be different as a function of the angular mismatch uh, are shown here. So on the left side, you can see this very uh, uh, pioneering work, basically discussing the fact that if you have a bilayer graphene system and you apply a vertical electric field, you can open a band gap. And already from 2009, that was a great promise uh, for all kinds of logic applications, because as you all know, single graphene uh, doesn't have a band gap. Uh, so it basically cannot function as, a, as a, an efficient logic switch. switch. Uh, and the, the story was actually interesting since it took three or four years to realize that uh, this can only uh, happen when you have a banner stacking. So, so the story was that many groups actually tried to follow this concept, trying to see this band gap opening, but uh, in many uh, cases they have a misfit angle, uh, and they were actually not aware of that. And it took three or four years to realize that uh, this can only stand for Bernal stacking. So I think this is probably the point where all these twisted graphene structures started, the, the, the huge research that is still ongoing. And then part of this, this effort realized in this very uh, astonishing uh, uh, publications, uh, 2018, uh, where a group from uh, Colombia and MIT showed that uh, uh, whenever you have a 1.1 angular mismatch, you can actually realize superconductivity. They call it magic angle, magic angle buyers. And this really shows, I think, or emphasize the fact that you can get totally different physical aspects depending on the angular mismatch. So this is basically what I'm going to uh, talk about today. Uh, and of course, uh, not only the electronic properties, uh, basically almost every other material properties like the mechanical friction, you all know, you can switch, switch from high friction to low friction. You can basically tune the band gap. Uh, you can induce different interlayer coupling and interlayer conductivity. You can also change the optical and optical phonon interaction like Raman coupling uh, as function of the, this angular mismatch. And you can also realize what is called van der Waals heterostructure, where you combine different materials, still playing with the angular mismatch angle, and get very, very unique uh, and uh, superior uh, properties, like very high mobility, uh, again, tuning the band structure, and also realizing OBA superlubricity, which was first uh, basically uh, suggested by Oded, and was actually realized a few years back by a group of uh, quantum design. And probably one of the most intriguing fact is that you can actually tune all these properties in a very tunable uh, manner. So you can get uh, either uh, switching between different properties or also continuously changing the uh, 
the material properties. So just to make some order, uh, we are talking about twisted stacking configuration. Let's see what are the different families that we can consider. So uh, along with the Bernal stacking, which is, you can see this in the left side, which of course is a commensurate periodic uh, stacking configuration. This is when you have the two layers aligned. Uh, you have the twisted stacking configuration and in general, you consider the non-commensurate structure, like for example, 10 degrees. And in essence, this happens when you have an irrational ratio between the super lattice structure and the single graphene lattice. And then it turns out that you can have more exotic type of configuration, for example, pseudo commensurate, where essentially the ratio between the super lattice structure and the single graphene system is rational. And then you have a strictly periodic interaction. And also you have more, uh, uh, how to say, uh, exotic uh, uh, configuration, like a quasi-commensurate structure, for example, for uh, 30 degrees. And uh, we have shown that this uh, stacking uh, configuration has a distinct effect on, on the frictional properties. For example, you would expect that uh, along with the strictly commensurate configuration for the pseudo-commensurate configuration, you would have a linear scaling of the friction uh, force with uh, area contact and for the quasi-commensurate actually there is a more intriguing uh, periodicity you get a quasi-periodic or self-similar uh, uh, interaction between this uh, fractal-like structure. So the way we experimentally study these systems is actually very simple we realize this uh, nanoscale uh, metal uh, structures on top of HOPG. This allows us to get very large arrays of systems and then we start to manipulate them with an AFM. Uh, already from the beginning, we have seen this very uh, interesting behavior. So just by measuring the lateral forces, we could get an indication that there is a very small lateral force. This is uh, this force versus uh, displacement curve that you can see here. Essentially the trace and retrace are almost completely overlapping. Uh, there is a tiny uh, uh, friction that is basically, uh, in this case, this is, these are circular structures, is coming from the, mainly from the circumference. Uh, and this was actually a very nice uh, closer to a very interesting and intriguing experiment done first by Quan Chi Zhang group. So you can see here, this is a macroscopic probe, a few microns square. And while shearing this pillar, they could see that it self-retracts. And again, this basically comes from the fact that the friction is extremely small compared to the adhesion. So when we, when we measure these forces, we are basically governed by only adhesion forces. And this basically tells us that we can come up with all kinds of design rules. We can essentially design the shape of the structure and by that induce different lateral forces. So this is essentially coming from the fact that the adhesion is simply proportional to the area and the lateral force will be proportional to the derivative of the area change. And this is what you would get for the circular flakes. Uh, for more complicated structure, you can see here uh, this uh, green curve, you get some nonlinear response and then you can get a constant force and you can see also zero force, which is basically buried uh, within this profile. And then of course, this scales with the radius, as you can see from here, which allows also one to very efficiently extract the binding energy uh, in graphite and in all kinds of other two dimensional uh, layered materials. And by designing these rules, uh, one can also come up with some other uh, type of devices, for example, bistable structure. And this is what we call rotational bearing structure, which when one can induce a single interfacial twist effect uh, buried uh, in more or less the middle of the structure. And we have used this to measure how the conductivity, the interlayer conductivity is changing as function of the angular mismatch. So this is basically measuring of the current as we continuously rotate the structures. And this allows us to get really unprecedented ag angular resolution. Uh, which allowed to see for the first time this uh, very abrupt and narrow conductivity peaks. Uh, so basically uh, explaining all these profiles, uh, this mild modulation, this bathtub-like shape is basically induced by phononated interlayer coupling. So this is the K-space schematic illustration. You can see that when you rotate 
the flakes in, in real space, there is also rotation in k-space, and you're starting, you're starting to have this momentum mismatch, and it turns out there is a phonon branch that can mediate this, this transport, and, and, and this is basically probing this of the population of this uh, momentum, uh, sorry, this uh, phonon branch, and this very sharp conductivity peaks, uh, especially uh, with the help of uh, Oded and the student Itai, we could explain uh, these peaks by pseudo commensurate periodic super lattice structures. They can come with uh, two different symmetries, like you can see here, these are the arrangement of the atoms. And actually, you see this super lattice plane structure that is associated with this, um, with this uh, uh, stacking configuration. And you can see actually why, for one uh, symmetry, you would get a triangular shape, for example, like here. And for the other symmetry, you get a double peak shape. You see the plane structure here. So this really uh, gives the essence of how this electronic arrangement is, is playing a role here. So then moving a bit forward, uh, we uh, probed how the current is modulated as function of the lateral distance. And uh, in the beginning, we naively considered that the current will be proportional to the overlap uh, area. So uh, essentially, you have two circles of this graphite structure. You slide with AFM, you measure the force, but you also measure the current. And if you consider that only the area plays a role, uh, the best fit that you can get is this uh, blue uh, solid line. And this doesn't really explain very well uh, the measure and the experiment. And then it turns out that only if we add another channel that is essentially proportional to the circumference of these structures, we can get a very good fit. And this gives the first indication that the circumference or edge states are playing a, a very strong role in, in the electronic transport between the, the top and the bottom mesa. And another indication was here. So when, whenever we changed the applied bias, we saw different contributions. So I didn't mention, but this uh, equivalent electric circuit and the fitting procedures uh, allow us to uh, extract the different contributions for bulk and edge. And this is what you can see here. So these lines basically add up. Uh, the blue line is, is the contribution of the bulk and the green is the edges and summing, summing them up together and we get the, the total response. But the interesting part was that what we saw is that whenever we use a lower applied bias, this is the, the applied bias, it's, it's the, the, the applied potential that is dropped uh, across the interface is about three times lower. We see dramatic reduction in the contribution of the bulk and this, again, uh, brought us to the uh, seminal work by Dresselhaus considering the transport uh, or the electronic band structure of graphene uh, flakes and graphene nanoribbons. Essentially, what they show there is that uh, whenever you have zigzag states, you have a very sharp density of states, or even you can call it topologically protected edge states, which are localized at the zigzag edges. And this is really corresponding to this very sharp density of state peak. And then when you increase the, the Fermi window or the, 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 the applied bias, you probe more and more the, the bulk states. So this can essentially explain why when we probe uh, or when we apply a small uh, bias, we, uh, we probe more uh, the contribution of these edge states. So in order to get the full response, the full uh, current voltage characteristics, uh, we apply this uh, technique. We take the full IV and then we slide five nanometer and then we take another IV and uh, just making a long story short, this allows us to extract for all the applied bias conditions, a separate contribution, essentially the current voltage curve for edges and bulk. And this is what you can see here. So these are just two sets of profiles taken from here. And the most interesting part is that if you compare the, the IV curve of the bulk um, against the, the transport of the edges, you see that for the edges, you get rather a more linear response, but for the bulk, you see this insulating behavior at the lower bias regime. But when you increase the bias, you see even actually intersection and the, the bulk uh, transport takes over. So again, with the help of Oded uh, and Bal, uh, uh, we wanted to explain this also from a theoretical 
point of view. And what you can see here, these are very nice calculation of the wave function distribution. You see that for perfectly hexagonal flakes, uh, you get a very strong amplitude of the wave function just at the zigzag edges. So these are perfectly hexagonal uh, uh, flakes uh, terminated only by zigzag uh, edges. And if you calculate the transmittance, you see this indication of this strong density of state, of state, of state peaks that are associated with, with the zigzag termination. And then if you do the same calculation for armchair terminated flex, you see this uh, typical uh, transmission. And this, again, uh, in agreement with the density of states that is associated with the bulk states. So whenever we have a circular flakes, we actually have a combination. And this is calculation for 50 nanometer diameter, um, 50 nanometer, uh, 15 degrees uh, angular mismatch. And you can see how this wave function is strongly localized at the zigzag uh, edges. And then it was uh, important to uh, describe how this wave function decay into the bulk for two reasons. Uh, essentially, we wanted to use this computational analysis to explain the experimental results. And we wanted to show that this wave function fully decay into the bulk already from sizes of about 15 to 20 nanometer. And this basically tells us that we can essentially use this um, uh, wave function characteristics or transport in order to explain bigger uh, flakes uh, by essentially just scaling up according to the geometry in a simple manner. And basically, the, the second important point is that we can associate the main transport that is related to the edges just for the first two nanometers. So we get almost two orders of magnitude decay across the first two nanometers. And basically, the theoretical approach is to separate the contribution of the transport and the wave functions and first for the first two nanometer and uh, around the circumference and compare it with the transport at the bulk regimes. So we scale this just in a ge simple geometrical manner. This is what we get. Uh, what in principle we see is that when we have a Berman stacking configuration, uh, we are completely for, for the size of the experimental uh, system, which is 300 nanometer in diameter, we are completely dominated by bulk. Uh, transport, but if we induce a rotational uh, mismatch of 15 degrees, we start to be dominated by edge uh, across the low bias regime. And then only if we apply a larger and larger uh, uh, bias uh, voltage, we start to be dominated by the edges. So we can also integrate essentially uh, these curves and get the current, and we get the same trends for the current uh, voltage curves. Then it was also interesting to do the scaling al analysis. And what we've done here, we basically calculate the transport for uh, bulk and edges separately as a function of the radial distance for different applied bias conditions. And essentially, uh, we would expect that as we increase the size of the contact, essentially the bulk will win just because of the geometric scaling. And then we could basically consider this intersection, so these points where uh, bulk transport uh, takes over. And we could basically plot these intersections as a function of the voltage. And this basically allows us to get this sort of a phase diagram of transition from uh, edge transport to bulk tr transport. So for each uh, and every angular mismatch below the curve, we are dominated by edge transport. And, and above, we are dominated by bulk transport. And what was interesting to see is that Whenever we increase this angular mismatch, we can get at the low bias regime, we can still be dominated by edges at the pretty large diameters up to two micron. And if we basically want to compare this with the experimental results, so for experimental, we know the diameter or the radius in this case, and we can take this intersection, basically the point where the bulk takes over, which is uh, uh, at about 0.3 volts if we consider the potential drop across the interface. And this uh, indicates that the angular mismatch uh, experimentally is between 5 and 15 uh, degrees. And this is actually in good agreement with the previous scaling um, analysis that we've done, considering how the friction scales with size. 
So this is more or less in, in a good agreement with what we think that uh, is uh, the angular mismatch in the experimental system. And this is a, a, another interesting uh, experiment. So in this case, we, we have done the same uh, kind of experiment. We slide uh, these two measure structures and we measure the, the current. And it turns out that if we focus just across the five nanometer, last five nanometer uh, distance, we see a, an onset of very strong current fluctuations. Um, so if we just remove the background, this is what we see. And mainly uh, we see contribution of two different periodicities. One is uh, about five Armstrong peak to peak distance, and another is two Armstrong. So just considering the registry or the, the, the lattice uh, structure of the two graphitic systems, we actually would expect to see these two Armstrong fluctuations. Basically, whenever we have a large carbon-carbon uh, overlap, uh, we would uh, expect to see this uh, increase in conductivity. But the other, essentially longer periodicity was uh, more unexpected. And actually, this was in pretty good agreement with some experiments done a few years ago. And in this case, they use brake junction graphene system, so they break it and, and essentially bring it back to contact many, many times, uh, integrating, and they could also see this essentially larger periodicities uh, at about six, uh, five to six Armstrong. Uh, in this case, they're, they're using only Bernard stacking, so they start with uh, uh, essentially a single graphene flake, and then they uh, uh, do this experiment. So again, with the help of Oded uh, in Bali and Abraham, we wanted to explain uh, how we can basically uh, assign or what, what we could assign um, or the, what is the fundamental uh, origin of this longer periodicity. So the, the first calculation of the current was actually showing us that experimentally what we would expect is again, this larger periodicity. So this is the calculation of the current as function of the sliding. And then we also consider and compare it with the registry index, which is essentially, again, uh, describe how the carbon atoms are essentially uh, coming into greater and, and lower uh, interaction. And again, expectedly here, we, we saw these two Armstrong uh, fluctuation. So we wanted to, again, find the essence of this uh, large fluctuation. So we consider how they get the, the wave function um, um, that are localized at the zigzag edges, uh, basically coming to interaction as function of the sliding um, uh, conditions. And I think this movie will explain the best what is really going on. So in the calculation, what we do, we assign a Gaussian function that describes the wave function amplitude atop the carbon atom. So even from the calculation itself, we would expect uh, these two Armstrong overlap. But essentially, when you do this, this sliding and you look over the, the wave function amplitude, you see that it's dramatically changing as function of the position, which tells us that there is some additional interference or coupling uh, uh, behavior as function of this interlayer uh, motion and coupling. Essentially, uh, what you can see, especially uh, across the last few nanometers, you can see this very, very strong fluctuations and it turns out that this really is uh, uh, the underlying mechanism for the larger periodicity that we that we see uh, and then and then we basically wanted to complete the picture so what you can see here this is sort of a master plot uh, it's the current as function of the angular uh, mismatch and the lateral shift just across the few last nanometer this is the current this is the registry index again you see this different behaviors here. It's much more uh, uh, fluctuated. And uh, if we consider the Gaussian overlap functions, we basically get a very, very um, uh, good agreement with the calculation for the current. So again, this seems to be quite robust uh, for all the, the different angular configurations. And I don't know how basically I'm with the time, but I think this is uh, the last slide. So with this, I would like to thank you again for listening. And uh, of course, if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer. You do it, you did perfectly with time. All right. Thank you very much.
Thanks a lot. Questions? Comments? Could I? Yes. So, uh, thank you very much. Very, very interesting. What I probably uh, not understood uh, completely, how you could separate uh, from your measured data the contribution mm -hmm. coming from you, what you are calling uh, bulk and edge. What is the, what is the, the reason or, or how you calculate that? You mean the, from the experimental data? Yes. So th this is actually uh, pretty simple. So you see this equivalent uh, electric circuit. We have some constant resistances that we assign with the system and the top and the bottom graphite mesa structures. And we assign the changes only uh, for the interface itself. And then as we know the function of the, the area as function of the sliding uh, distance, uh, we can basically, uh, basically, you know, go through this fitting procedure um, and extract the contribution. So what I was basically mentioning is that if we only consider a bulk resistor, a variable resistor that is proportional to the area overlap, we cannot really get a good fit. This is the best fit we can get, this uh, blue line. And then if we assign another uh, resistor that is in, in this case, is proportion to the circum to the circumference. So basically, this these two different contributions change differently as function of the sliding position, and because of this difference, you can actually separate between the two contributions. So that means that uh, you suppose to separate these two terms based on the apparent uh, overlap volume. Uh, exactly, uh, exactly. The, the two, and, the, and these are two was, different functions. That was my second question. How you know that that uh, assumption is conformed to the reality? So uh, I don't fully understand the question. So, so, the, what, so it is absolutely, absolutely very cool what you did and and uh, your model is uh, is absolutely fine with me uh, it has uh, the basic assumption of the dependence of the apparent area but uh, we don't know in such a nano contact how uh, how the contact takes place uh, so, so i mean what I can just say is that this is a strictly geometrical analysis. Exactly, okay. exactly. Uh, exactly. And of course, this is why it was important for us to also complete the story, um, you know, in terms of theoretical analysis. And this is essentially what you see here. And sure. also in, in the theoretical uh, analysis, we saw that we would expect very strong contribution uh, of the edges, and in particular right. the zigzag edges, that they're right. completely. For example, in this case, you see these perfect hexagonal flakes. Uh, you are completely dominated by the transmittance of these uh, edge states. I mean, this is what we know from from the background. The the, the transmittance of these edge states uh, is is around the zero. This is just this peak around the zero energy, and and this also in accordance to this wave function localization at the zigzag edges. So, uh, and this is in contrast for the armchair. So, so okay. th there seems to be very different contributions for the bulk and the edge states. Okay, okay, fine with me. Thank you. More questions? <clears throat> I have one myself, Erad. Um, so in the last uh, example that you showed when you had the contact between two circular samples, right? And you showed uh, uh, these two different periodicities and you explained you explain them out very nicely. Uh, wouldn't that depend on the relative angle of the two, of the two uh, circular things? And uh, what does that uh, lead? Did you do it or? Uh... So, I mean, experimentally, we don't have actually control when we do this experiment and we only did it theoretically. So this is what I was showing in the, in the end. So this is just the theoretical calculation. You have the current. So this is the twist angle, right, 0 to 30. And this is the last 
Ah. In this case, three nanometers. I see, yes. So this is the current, this is the resistor index, and this is the Gaussian overlap function. Right. So right. You, you see how it changes. There, there are some, some changes, but uh, the periodicity seems to actually be quite robust. Um, uh, what you can nicely see is that as you increase the angular mismatch, you are basically more and more dominated by the edges, right? So you see that only when the two edges are really, really aligned, you start to see strong transport. Here, there is sort of a valley. I see. So, sim yeah. so, so, so the two uh, zigzag edges are touching when you are in the twist uh, zero. Is that, is that right? When is it? Uh, that, uh, no. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. What, what we also know from, from the other calculation is that when you're close to zero angle, you are actually dominated by bulk. Ah. Uh, and this is why you see strong I transport see. whenever mm -hmm. you have more overlap. Mm -hmm. And when you break the symmetry, you see that actually transport through the bulk or, you know, I describe it through the bulk because here you have more overlap. So you would expect more current but it's actually lower. You have this higher current when the two edges are really one on top of the other. Okay. okay. Um, one other thing is, uh, in all of this, does it matter how you passivate your, edge, uh, your edges, I mean, at the microscopic uh, chemical level, or do we have to assume, as it uh, reasonable that these edge states are really so delocalized they don't care what you do at the outer surface so so the, i mean delocalized i don't know exactly what this means i, I deeply would say penetrating that they're actually not not too much delocalized but from theoretical point of view and odet was also part of some papers uh, about even 10 years ago they did the an analysis of these uh, edge states as function of the different chemical modifications, and they actually saw that this is extremely robust yes. against many, many different kinds of chemical modifications. Actually, even in some cases, they saw an enhancement of, of these edge states. Which would agree with so, the topological nature which you alluded to, right? Exactly, exactly. There were other uh, papers that consider different roughness uh, you know, values, and again, also there, they saw very, very robust nature of, this, uh, of these states. Okay. If we have no more questions, then we thank um, Elad Koren. Thank you very much, thank Elad. Thank you very much. Right. Next uh, speaker online is Nitya Goswami. Hello. Hello. I'm audible.